And like, that's and that's what I answer to people because, of course, you know, some people do come up to me and say, "Father, you know, in my parish, you know, I don't know, but but my priest, our parish priest, he's he does this, he does that, you know, and it's it's difficult for me to to um, to uh, to concentrate myself at mass because, well, there's there's this music and then there's that way of doing and that, you know, w- what should I do, Father? Salve Maria, welcome to Mary Our Queen, the podcast of the Slaves of Our Lady. Today we have with us once again, Reverend Father Bande. Salve Maria. And for the first time, who's joining us is Brother Mauro Hernandez. Salve Maria. Brother Mauro serves in the U.S. in the House of the Heralds in the States in Houston, isn't it, brother? Yes. Yeah. yeah. But he's in Texas. He's visiting us here, and he's joining us for the first time on this podcast. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you very much, Father Mauro. This opportunity. Welcome. <laughs> so, Father, today's theme is something which. It's important for us as slaves of Ali, but then again for all Catholics. I mean, no Catholic can be a true Catholic if the person has no devotion to Mass. And that is what we're talk- going to be talking about today. The Holy Mass, because unfortunately, we've been having Mass for over, ever since the Church was instituted. We have been having Mass, and yet, until today, it seems that people, even in our days, people don't really understand very often what is Mass or what is the main point about Mass. It, it's not a social ceremony. It's something much more than that, isn't right. it, Father? Yes, exactly. And it's something that we always have to um, make an effort to um, to appreciate because as as everything, you know, um, we, uh, we can end up banalizing yeah. something that we have um, so um, that we have and that we've been uh, doing for so many years. And as cradle Catholics, if we can call ourselves like that, you know, we were born uh, in the church, thanks be to God, we were baptized, and then we were brought up, made our first communions, and then we started assisting Mass. Many of us served Mass, (laughs) altar servers. I was an altar server since I I was like five or (laughs) six years old. Yes, my God. (laughs) So, 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 you know, and so we were, thanks be to Our Lady, uh, brought up in in the Catholic Church, and so we um, had this uh, uh, accessibility, right, to Mass, uh, living in free countries where Mass was readily available. And the da- the danger is to, um, when you have something readily available like that, is to start to lose your awe. Exactly. <laughs> you lose the awe to the mystery of what is going on. Mm-hmm. And so this is why I think it's important, yeah. uh, Brother John, that we uh, we have this discussion today, uh, brothers and sisters, in order to re- revitalize our awe, you know, uh, to this beautiful um, mystery, which is the sacrifice of the Mass. The sacrifice of Mass, which is basically um, the, uh, uh, the Lord's Last Supper, right, yeah. that He um, uh, uh, offered us as a memorial of His Passion. And his resurrection. Exactly. Yeah. So the mass is exactly the the most that our Lord could give for us was holy mass. He gave himself to us in his mass. And it's beautiful because theologians theologians comment that he waited until the vespers of his death, of his passion, yeah. to institute mass. Because that is because the what remains in our mind are always the last words that somebody says before they part. Mm-hmm. And our Lord wished that the most important, the most marked moment of his life, what the disciples would remember from him, would be Mass. And he even stressed it with the words, no? do this in memory of me. There we go. Yeah. Yes, it's a, it's a memorial. So, um, and what does a memorial mean? A memorial is that we're, um, it's not, it's not a remembrance. We're not, we're not, um, it's, 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 it's to live yeah. the moment of the Last Supper, where our Lord is offering himself as bread, as drink, um, as a sacrament, a divine sacrament for our spiritual nourishment. So the priest here who um, who received sacred orders um, linked to all the bishops and linked to the apostles and linked to our Lord Jesus Christ, right? It's yeah. it's all it's all um, um, a chain, a continuous succession of exactly. Mm-hmm. So the priest when he celebrates this mystery of Holy Mass, um, he becomes persona Christi. <laughs> It's it's as a priest as you know I I always get very emotional in these moments, um, especially at the moment of the consecration. Of course, you know when when you when I go and and I say the con- the words of consecration, I go and I say, 
um, do this um, and take this. This is my this is my body. So when when a priest goes and says this word, for me the the word that I I tremble at is my body. <laughs> You know, it's, it, it's, it's, and then this is my blood. Take this and, and this is my blood. It, it's, it's so beautiful. And so this is the moment of the transubstantiation where there's this mystery where, where the bread and the wine, they are transformed, they are elevated, they are, they, and, they, and so they are bread and wine only in appearance. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and then they become the real sac- sacrament. They be, and the, the, red and, the bread and wine becomes Christ. Christ. Yeah. And Father, I guess, Somebody can object, somebody who does not have a, a sound enough uh, theological formation, or it could be just uh, a doubt can appear in anybody's mind. Why does the church institute the words, this is my body? Wouldn't it have been more appropriate for the, cre- for the priest to say, this is Christ's body or this is Jesus' body? Wouldn't it have been more appropriate than saying my body as though the priest, is, of course he says, and Jesus said, but then... Wouldn't have been better. Why did the church choose this? Yeah, almost like to make it clear for everyone to understand. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, you're reminding the people. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, these are christological uh, questions, you yeah. know, and and uh, it, these were big discussions in the early primitive church. Um, there were a lot of um, discussion about this, uh, and uh, and the church actually had to um, to. Um, to define um, what were the proper words that had to be used. And, and it's beautiful, um, um, I think it was the con- Council of Sh- Chalcedon, Chalcedon in Turkey in the year 452. St. Le- Saint Leo the Great, St. Leo the Great, uh, St. Leo the First, he's the one that, uh, that decreed um, that, uh, that uh, our Lord Jesus Christ, all right, was not two persons. He wasn't, <laughs> he wasn't a human and he wasn't a god. He was one. It was yeah. the incarnation, you see, and so this and so this um, these christological um, questions that uh, that were discussed and and were therefore afterwards um, promoted and and this is where we have afterwards the dogmas of our yeah. faith. Mm-hmm. You know, they they came up with the um, the uh, the um, the beautiful um, uh, fact that uh, no, when when mass is celebrated, mm-hmm. the priest is is not is not speaking. Um, uh, for our Lord Jesus Christ, He's speaking in the name <laughs> of our Lord Jesus Christ. So He's. This is in Latin we say persona Christi. He's another Christ. Actually, it's not only in, in Mass, right, that the priest is another Christ. Yeah. He, it's also in the other sacraments, all the seven sacraments, um, in confession. Also, when he goes and he says, "And so I absolve you of all your sins," and I. So the word once again as a priest that 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 really touches me. All right, is that is that is that pronoun right? It's the I and I absolve you. Who am I, Father Francois, <laughs> Father Monday, <laughs> to absolve someone's sins? So it's not me. Only God can pardon sins. There you go. So, so that's why it's only God. And so who am I to say this is my? You know, this is this is Christ's body. No, 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 no. It's not Christ's body. This is my body. The consecration is take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body. So the priest is another Christ, you know, who's offering, this is my body, um, and so uh, which will be given up for you. And so he's offering himself. And so it's an invitation for us to unite ourselves and to just feel that we're being loved. Yeah, interesting, yeah. yeah it's, it's an invitation to love. It, it's good to um, mention that the, the, how sublime it is, that moment of the Holy Mass, because of course, as you mentioned, we we are very well accustomed to going to Holy Mass at least every Sunday, and for those who have the grace to go daily Mass, and uh, being human beings through routine, we get, grow accustomed to things so yes. so supernatural, as you mentioned, the, like trivializing those things, making them just common, but keeping those things in mind helps a lot. And maybe if like walking through various aspects of the mass could help the viewers to maybe well maybe before before that let's ask brother Mauro brother Mauro yes um, yes Why ask him a question no you're in trouble <laughs> because because it's interesting it's interesting that you're you know I I would like to know because you're you're talking about how we shouldn't banalize the mass and how we should keep our ourselves always you know um, attentive and and in awe towards mass I would yes. like to know what was what was your first flash. Of mass, you know, what when when was the moment where you had the first type of awe 
in front of mass? Was it when you were in Mexico uh, <laughs> before immigrating to the United States? Or was it when, because you immigrated, how old were you when you went to the well, United States? Um, I was 10 years old when I went to the United States. And, uh, but you were already a practicing Catholic. Yes, in, in, in already Mexico. a practicing Catholic. But the Holy Mass, I would say, was more uh, step by step, okay. like growing more, going more in, in depth. Were you an the, altar server in Mexico? I was in the United States. That's where I, I became an altar server. In the United States. But it was more after growing older. That I received okay. the uh, special grace of flash, flash regarding the Mass. What but moment? What what was it's the... particularly in with the raising the host and the chalice. Particularly, and of course, uh, I would say nowadays when uh, our Lord is presented, both the host and the chalice. Uh, the, the, this is the Lamb of God who takes away nowadays, the sins. Of who the takes away sin. nowadays? Now that is powerful. Is that. Take pay attention, everybody. I would like this is another part of Mass that I really tremble at, is when I present that host and the chalice. This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Now that is powerful. It's very <laughs> takes away the sins of the world. You have him in your hands. And you have him in your hands. Oh my God. <laughs> and for us, the faithful, at least in this particular case, it was it's just to consider like he, the one who has everything to give, is in front of me, is just waiting for me to ask. So in that moment, it's almost like to tremble in the sense, what, uh, what am I about? What do I have to ask now? <laughs> it was like, it, just thinking of how uh, awesome, per se, in, in the, our Lord there, being so available to us, so kind, so, ben uh, so good that he's willing to present himself hmm. and say, just ask and I will give. It's the sacrifice. So in that of love. sense, that's a flash. Exactly. It's, it's a sacrifice, sacrifice of love. love. Understanding that that unconditional love. Yeah. It's it's uh, I because think that's where in it Holy Scripture, right? Jesus goes and says, you know, there's no love greater than to give your own life for another. Exactly. For another. Exactly. Exactly. And so and so and he goes and he gives us the example. Yeah. Right? Yeah. When he allows himself to be persecuted, his passion, his death. Right, so he, our Lord, gives us his the example, and so he is inviting us also to follow him. And he knows that we're weak, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and we're feeble, and that we're, we're scared, stiff to 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 embracing the cross. You know, to do a sacrifice is, is some people. Um, well, everyone finds it hard, right? Sure. Especially when the sacrifice involves physical suffering. To, to accept to suffer, you know, when you're in a, on that there uh, bed, you're sick, uh, you know, you've gone through an accident or something, to, to realize that you're, you know, that you might not come out of this alive yes. is frightening. Yeah. But we look at the cross and the cross is a sign of our salvation. And the cross is what we should always be reminding ourselves um, that is, it, it is life. This, and, and the sacrament to help us embrace our cross is the Eucharist, Precise. you see? Precise. Because this is, this is where we're going to receive that nourishment, that power, that feeling that we're being loved. Because when you feel that you're loved, you become more generous. Yes. <laughs> That's very true. Huh? <laughs> That's very true. Yeah. When you feel that love, you're, okay, well, he loves me, well, I'll, I'll, I'll do that for him. You know? St. John said, God loved us first, and thus we love each other, and we love him above all. But because he took the initiative to love us, if it wasn't for his love, Yes. It wouldn't make sense for us to it would not wouldn't make sense. We would not have the strength to uh, adore him, to serve him as he ought to. Because being God, being infinite, we as his creatures owe him service. We owe him praise, worship, etc. He did not have to give us something so that we would no. Just the fact that he created us, being a creator, we have to serve him. But we would not do so if we did not, if we did not feel loved there, by him. There you go. Because I'm going to ask you also, Brother John, when was your first <laughs> flash with the Holy Mass? Oof. But before this, before this, I'm going to I'm going to just uh, remind everybody here of something beautiful, beautiful. Um, the other day we celebrated the um, the feast of King Saint Louis of France. Mm -hmm. King Saint Louis of France, right? Who was King of France? Saint Louis, very pious, very devoted man. He uh, was very generous, very very good, and um, and very busy. He was king. Right, Very but did you know that Saint Louis would assist many, many, several masses a day? Oh. A day, 
several masses a day. And when his um, Joinville, all right, were his biographer, all right, um, and his ministers, sometimes they would go, they would go complain to St. Louis, you know. St. Louis, aren't you wasting a lot of time here? You, this is your fourth mass today, you know. Uh, <laughs> you know, we have work to do, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And he was very busy at his time. France was going through a turmoil, which he put in peace. I mean, he worked very hard at those periods. And you know what St. Louis would answer them? Well, my ministers, you know, if I was out hunting right now, or huh. if I was out, you know, uh, uh, um, with my army, uh, no one would think that I'm wasting time. Yeah. But I'm at mass, and mass is much, much more important than hunting, than being with my army, than being with my ministers. I'm praying. So, so um, you know, it's, this, is, this is the, I think it's the medieval um, secret to the to to why today we have those cathedrals, yeah. you see, because Saint Louis Saint Louis, what what happened? He had a flash with the mass. <laughs> he would assist many masses a day, you know. Of the, despite the fact that he was king, he had all the the the, the work, the, the the weight of a kingdom on his on his shoulders. He would assist two, three, four masses a day. He wouldn't receive communion every mass, right? Because you can only receive yeah. communion um, once. Um, today, actually, that would be interesting. Maybe yeah. we could talk about this at another time. But but today there are exceptions. There are, today can receive, you can receive communion twice. twice in a day. All right. But we can maybe speak, speak yeah. about that at another podcast. Right. <laughs> but but anyways, at the time of Saint Louis, you could only receive communion once. Mm -hmm. All right. But he would assist three, four, five masses a day, and so and so this why because he had a flash with mass, mm -hmm. and so the flash with the mass made the medieval man build those cathedrals yeah. that we exactly. have today. The cathedrals, the medieval cathedrals, Chartres, Notre Dame, um, uh, all those, uh, you know, Cologne, they, they, they're all fruits of a flash with the mass. Exactly. I mean, it's proper to man that when he likes something a lot, when he's enchanted with something, he creates structures, edifices to symbolize his enthusiasm. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, in today's world, we find people for making machines of war, making huge yeah. stadiums for games. And there's nothing wrong in itself, but... It's always something secondary. There you you find all sort of constructions which cost much more, and uh, they don't. They're not so necessary. But well, let's say that they're they're they're, they're horizontal. Yeah. They're, they're they're a horizontal yeah. perspective of life. Yeah. So stadiums, you know, um, nothing wrong in itself. Hockey rinks. Yeah. Father's Canadian, right? So <laughs> hockey, hockey rinks, and all. You know, we respect very much. I was yeah. a big hockey player. You know, I loved hockey or baseball. You know, United <laughs> States. You know, so have all these stadiums, which which is not bad. But these yeah. are horizontal perspectives exactly. of life. Exactly. We have to learn to have vertical perspectives. Yeah. That, that, that's the thing, that's where St. Louis' devotion came from. Because he knew that the essence was in moving God's heart. Yeah. Thus, the rest will be consequence of moving his kingdom, being able to administer everything efficaciously. And there you go. It, he, it, he knew how to penetrate in the thing that was most important, which was his relationship with, with God. St. Louis suffered leading his life, you notice that he suffered many setbacks, a series of problems from the time that he assumed his throne. There were nobles revolting. He managed to put the France in order with a lot of difficulty. But then physically, he had many occasions where things could have gone wrong. The fact was there was a divine hand protecting him. There you go. He That's went for war. He had difficulties again. He suffered. He lost battles. He, But in spite of everything that would go wrong in his life, things would start out in the end. Yes. While people, if he had spent less attention to mass, if he had spent less attention to God and tried to sort out the physical problems, material problems, we don't know what would have happened to him. Because what solved the day, what saved the day, the end of everything, was the divine hand. When yes. everything went wrong for him, God intervened, things are put in order, things go forward. Yes. It was, uh, let's no, say, true, uh, true, so speaking true. in material terms. He invested his time seeing mass to take Lucy from a very oh, low aspect. A, yes, it was a good investment. It's an yeah, investment because much. what he got from God, well, of course, he did it for a much higher motive. He loved God. He adored God. But even if it was a mere material investment, it made sense for him to see masses than for him to be doing other things for the good of his kingdom. So so we spoke about the um, the fruits of the awe and the flash that St. Louis, um, well, kind of... Uh, promoted uh, he having had a flash with mass you know he he therefore um, he therefore uh, had uh, la saint chapelle built mm -hmm. right and notre dame exactly. so um, this is this is something that 
uh, so our auditors here today are curious now to see and to learn what is the flash, what was the, the first awe that Brother John had with Mass? Was it in India? Yes, of course. He was in India. Yeah, I, I moved here to Brazil. When I started living in Brazil, I was nearly 18. So yeah, a good part of my life was spent in India. In India. So, so you were an altar server in India. Yes, yeah. In a number of churches. Are the masses similar in India as they are here? Actually, I belonged to another right father. Okay. So we have Latin masses there, but uh, Siro Malabar right. Uh, yes, the masses were. It was another style of mass, similar to Latin, but the the prayers were different. A number of things were different. Uh, but then, for those who don't know, in, in the Catholic Church, we we have the Latin rite, which yeah. is the most common and 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 known la- rite. But there are many many other rites. Um, that uh, that 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 um, respect the different cultures. Uh, so in India, there's um, there's this Siro right, Malabar Siro Malabar right yeah. uh, that I- that in- is inspired from Saint Thomas, right? Exactly, they were the Christians. Saint Thomas the Apostle, who were converted by Saint Thomas the Apostle, but then after his death, they lost communication with the West. So okay. for centuries. They continued practicing Christianity, hmm. but on their own, with a connection with Rome. And Rome, the Pope, is the central, the clock tower, so to speak, where everyone can look and adjust their own watches. So many centuries away from Rome, they started having naturally certain small uh, deviations, etc. But when they, over time, with the contact with the Portuguese and the Spanish, when India had contact with the West again, then they were re- reunited to Rome. And yes, but over time, they had developed many traditions, many rites, which were proper to the region. Mm. And the Catholic Church, as some other, respected this. So they were incorporated into the Catholic Church, the church maintaining their traditions. The church is mother, isn't yeah. she? Isn't that something? Yeah. The church is mother. The church respects the um, the cultures, the, 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 the subtilities of each person, each exactly. culture. It's, exactly. it's so, so the church allows that there are different ways of celebrating mass. Mm-hmm. The essence is always the same. There's always the Eucharist. There's always the, the sacrifice. There's always the memorial. There's always the resurrection aspect of mass, right? Those are actually are the three elements of mass, all Precisely. right? So always remember, the mass is always a sacrifice, all right? It's not, it's not a party, all right. It's yeah. it's not a it's not a a, um, a social gathering. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> it's a sacrifice. So the mass is a sacrifice because we are offering the body of Christ for the redemption of the world. And we participate in the sacrifice. People forget that they're not there as mere two spectators. Spectators, exactly. They're not audience. They participate in the sacrifice that the priest is offering which is all sacrifice of Christ. And that's why people also make an offering, right? When yeah. there's a it's that symbolic offering. of their offering, so yes. of their own personal sacrifice. Too. Yes. Yes. And then and then mass is a memorial, yeah. all right? A memorial. So it's a it's 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 the the, whole, the last supper that is being reenacted again in, in persona Christi. And then it's also a banquet. It's, so it's the resurrection. Yeah. All right, we should always remember this. This is this is the beautiful aspect of it, and this is why masses are always joyful in the middle of the sacrifice of the sacrality. But there's always a joyful expectation of resurrection because <laughs> that's exactly. that's that's our that's our goal. All right, <laughs> always remember that we're as Christians, as Catholics, we're always looking towards the resurrection. Well, God Himself enters in 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 us through the communion, right? In the Holy Mass. What better gift there is on earth than than the Holy Communion? And it's part of the sacrifice. It's part of the sacrifice. Absolutely. Yeah. No, exactly. It's beautiful, yeah, exactly. So what is your uh, your awe? Brother, brother, (laughs) Brother John. He's he's trying to escape. He's (laughs) He's trying to to escape. escape. So So what was your first flash of (laughs) Mass? How old were you? How old were you? We want to know all the circumstances. Father, to be quite honest, the question is a little difficult to answer because it's like asking a child, which was the first time you were enchanted with your father or with your mother. Ever since I remember, I've been seeing mass. Ever since, it was like part of me. It was not something outside me for ever since. Before I had the use of reason, I was already seeing mass. I was already mm-hmm. participating in mass. So to speak of a first moment is a little difficult. Uh, it, it, it's easier when you come from outside and it's something new that you realize for the first time when you're older. But something I remember marked me a lot as a child. In Siro Malabar, right, there are other songs. There are other, there was one song which they would sing very often for communion. It imagines uh, the, the song is about a, ch- a child 
And his first communion song. Is the song in English? It's in Malayalam. Oh, okay. <laughs> Another language, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but the song uh, tells the case of a, a child who every day he watches at Mass. All the older ones go for communion. And being a child, he can't receive communion because he's not old enough. Oh, my. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's a sort of, and I used to always be ah, that's my situation. I mean, I want to receive communion. I want to, <laughs> when will the day come when I can finally receive my first communion? Because see, they're seeing this. I mean, they know what I feel, but they don't let me receive communion yet. <laughs> How long do I have to wait? <laughs> I remember a lot having this desire for communion. Also remember my first communion. All those things are very related to Mass. Uh -huh. Those are the first flashes I have. But today, I don't know, Father, what touches you the most, but... I've heard many priests say that the most, the part where they feel the most touched at Mass is when they elevate the chalice during the consecration. Oh, yes, yes. yes. I, I don't know how to explain this, but personally, I always felt more grace when the priest is elevating the host and not the chalice. Maybe because on the host, you can see, you can see the species, you can see the bread after the consecration, that's not true, bread anymore. Right? Because the chalice, the blood is inside, it's yeah. kind of hidden by the chalice. Exactly. Interesting, yes. But that, so to speak, when you see the priest touching with his fingers, of course, he does not touch our Lord mm -hmm. theologically, he's touching the accidents of bread, but when he's lifting up the species of uh, the body of Christ, when he's touching the host, it's something, it's man, mankind, uh, but then there's God and they're united and <laughs> man is raising God, but then God created man. <laughs> it's something spectacular. Yeah, that oh. moment is something very precious. And you always, whenever I see that, I also find it easier to identify the sacrifice of the priest with the, the sacrifice of Christ, when you see a priest who is really, who has devotion, who lives a holy life, who practices his Catholic priesthood as he ought to, thanks be to God, I've had contact with many priests like this in my life. When you see the priest raising up, you feel his sacrifice, united to the sacrifice of Christ. And that, that is magical. That moment is really special. So you, this is a, maybe an invitation for all, all the priests who are um, listening to uh, this podcast to um, always compenetrate themselves. <clears throat> An invitation, and also for the faithful who are listening to the podcast to, to kind of always inspire our, 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 our priests, our Catholic priests, to always um, prepare themselves for Mass and to always remind themselves and to celebrate Mass as though it was their first Mass <laughs> and as though it was their last Mass. Okay. I always have this very, very, I was, um, <clears throat> I celebrated Mass uh, there in Rome for many years for the, uh, uh, the Sisters of Mary Teresa. Mm. You were studying there, very different. Like, you yeah. How yes, long did you spend in Rome? Oh, yes, I was in Rome. I spent uh, actually 10 years in Rome. I was, I was working on my doctorate uh, in theology at the, at the Gregorian University. And there, so I had uh, the opportunity um, under um, Pope Benedict XVI to, um, to celebrate Mass many, many times there in St. Peter's Basilica. Interesting. Um, I was actually, um, before I was ordained, actually when I was a deacon, I had the, um, the grace of, uh, of serving Pope Benedict XVI at the... Wow. You uh, deaconed his Mass? Yeah, I did. I wow. deaconed his Mass, yes. I incensed the Pope. <laughs> <laughs> I, as a deacon, right? I incensed him, yes, and and offered the um, the the paten with the, the 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 bread for him to offer mass, and so it was a, a very 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 uh, high moment, and it was beautiful to see how um, Pope Benedict XVI was very very respectful, very respectful, very compenetrated at mass, and and uh, and so when uh, and and one of these occasions, of course, um, as I, I spent there for ten years, I, I I also was able to minister the Sisters of Mary Teresa. Madre mm. Teri Ma Mother, Teresa. Mother Teresa, and so I would go to their monastery. They were very, um, <clears throat> they were very, um, um, very, very, very. Um, how should I say? Um, very humble and very um, pious. Pious, very much so. <laughs> yes, and and of course, you know, they would live the poverty of the poor in their monastery, mm -hmm. and um, and so th they would um, prepare everything in the sacristy for the priest to go and prepare and vest vest himself to prepare for mass. And I I was always touched by a, a little writing that was just ab uh, above the uh, the vestments of the priests. The oh, sisters yeah. there had put, you know, um, a board. Sir. Yes, kind of a prayer, okay. you know. Oh Lord, may this, may I celebrate this mass as though it was my first, <laughs> and always remind myself that this might be my last. Interesting, you know, to kind of help the priest yeah. as he's vesting himself to prepare himself to realize that he's he's going to be celebrating in persona Christi. You see, he's going to be an instrument in the hands of the Lord in order to offer the sacrifice. 
Hmm. And this, this, this always touched me. And ever since, I've, I've always kind of um, meditated and, 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 and uh, developed this sensitivity. And so this is why, Father, I'm, I'm inviting everybody to, um, to pray for our priests, to pray for our clergy, our Catholic clergy, so that they, we, they may always compenetrate themselves and, and always follow this, this prayer that the sisters of Mother, There uh, Mother Teresa had put in their sacristy there, um, inviting the priest to always, always compenetrate himself. You know, this is not a... Mass is, 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 is something that is... Uh, we're going to um, bring God um, uh, onto the altar. <laughs> it's something that is, uh, you know, uh, God... Jesus, make, it becomes a slave in the hands of the priest because the priest can celebrate and have the Lord come down upon the altar anywheres. Yeah. You know, if, if I'm hiking with a group of scouts or altar servers and we're going up on a mountain, we're going to celebrate mass on a mountain, I celebrate mass on a mountain, Jesus will come upon the altar on the mountain. Exactly. Or if I go to a church or if I, I'm on a, a cruise ship, you know, uh, or if I'm, um, I don't know, I, I'm at war anywhere where a priest is ministering, he will be always having this mysterious power of bringing the Eucharist, Christ himself, present. Making heaven on earth. And bringing <laughs> heaven on earth. <laughs> making this link, right, yeah. between earth and heaven. Uh, Dr. Plinio, he's the mentor of our founder. We have books of him in the back. You can see his photo. Dr. Plinio once commented that our Lord Jesus Christ being God, obviously, knew everything. So when he instituted Mass, he knew that in the future, Mass would be abused. People would use Mass to desecrate the host, to blaspheme against him. He knew all the evil, all the sins which would be committed, and the sins would be much more grievous because a bad priest would have the possibility to offend him more because of mass. But in spite of that, knowing all the evil which would come out of this, he loved us so much that he wished to institute mass so that just so that each one of us could attend mass, could receive communion well. Mm -hmm. He was willing to suffer all that he suffered and continue suffering until our days. All the abuses, of course, people complain, it's often, and it's true. It's something scandalous, the amount of news we get nowadays of pe of priests who celebrate mass unworthily of the yes. liturgical abuses and things that of really ministry yes it's, yeah. it's 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 very very they, we were we began our our podcast speaking about the importance of having awe yeah um, awe in 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 the language of a herald of the gospel we like to speak about flash a flash is like a, is like a mystical grace it's like being in, in awe um, over over something sacred, right? And so and so, um, all priests, of course, become priests because they have they they receive a certain flash, exactly. you know, with the Eucharist. This is why Father was asking, you know, because we're hoping that yeah. one day they will be ordained priests, right? <laughs> Brother Mauro, Brother John. So I we 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 pray one day they may be ordained priests. But but it's important for them to always nourish their awe. Right, their flash towards, and so all priests receive the flash. Yeah. That's why they're priests today. But mm -hmm. as we are human, what happens? We start to banalize, yeah. and that's the danger. This is where we have to always be disciplining ourselves, making an effort never to banalize what is sacred. Yeah. Exactly. You see, and so this is this is the the the, and this is why you know that we we have Saint Louis as uh, King of France as an example. You know, he would. He would assist three, four, five masses a day. Nonetheless, he was a king, yeah. you know, with all the. But why? Because he would nourish. He would nourish. He would. He would. He would. He would build his awe. He would. He want to have more flash, more graces, more more compenetration of of that of that link um, that 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 occurred at the moment of the incarnation. Because mass, interesting, mass is a, is 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 the reenactment of the incarnation. Exactly. exactly. Everything in, everything in our Lord's life, everything in his, uh, everything that he went through, all of that is again brought here. Yes. The, I remember a priest once. This was a, another video we had made in Portuguese, I guess, about a year back. That was which we showed in the in this video the ceremony that we have every day here in our house of the benediction with the blessed sacrament because every day we end our day here before dinner, all the all the heralds get together and the priest gives the benediction of the blessed sacrament. Every week it's another priest who 
who presides so after we we filmed the whole thing we shot the whole video and then there was an interview with the priest and where he where we asked him father what do you feel what goes through your mind mm-hmm. when you give this benediction when he spoke about this all the all that i feel when i pause to think when you read in the gospel our lord jesus christ walked in galilee he cured a blind man he did this he did that now the same jesus who did all of that who died on the cross he resurrected is in my hands now is that very same jesus who's here with me who's who who agreed who came to the point of putting himself inside a small glass case mm-hmm. it's beautiful with gold and all that but still that's it <coughs> he put himself in this position mm-hmm. to give to bless us so that is what i have in my hands when i think about this i feel wow. Uh, so this is someone who's compenetrated, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, compenetrated. Yeah. So. And if I may, it's not only the priest, Father. It's also us, the lay, yeah. who have to have that in mind when we go assist the mass. Yes. Because as Brother John mentioned, we participate in that sacrifice. And not only participate, but you help the priests to compenetrate himself. If the lay people are distracted, all right, the altar servers are di- distracted. I like to have a lot of altar servers. When I'm celebrating mass, I, I celebrate mass in a very, in a, in, a, in a poor community here in Brazil, um, many shanty towns. My, my little right. parish, my little chapel there is in the middle of three shanty towns. So, so very, very poor, simple people and um, a lot of children. And I like to have all these children uh, kind of um, uh, involved, involved at Mass. Why? Because the children, their innocence inspires me to pe- penetrate into the innocence of Jesus. Interesting. Of the innocence of the Mass. <laughs> and, so, and so the children, when they're well behaved, of course, you know. <laughs> but I have the sisters. I have sisters that, that help me out there and et cetera. So, and the children, children they, if, if they see that the priest is, is very serious and very, very compenetrated, paternal. The priest has to be a father. That's exactly. why he's called a father. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I feel that, you know. I, I have to be like a, a real father. So always smiling, forgiving, always encouraging, you know, not not being afraid to correct, mm-hmm. you know. So when I see one of the altar servers, you know, do, do you know, hit, hit his brother, all right? Two brothers are altar <laughs> serving, of course, you know, and one will want to, to be in, in the first place place in the first spot and and so uh, there's a little fight between brothers all right well father has to with delicacy with charity all right correct the one who mm. hit his brother exactly. right yeah. all right so and, and they respect that they respect that and Be- so they help the father the priest celebrate mass because they're they're in an attitude of admiration right yeah. they see that before them there's something greater than them that's willing to come down and raise them up there you so go. I think that attitude, that, that type of uh, posture when going to attend Mass will help the faithful tremendously. And the faithful will help the priests. Exactly. It, it's, yeah. it's, it's a circle that... And I thought about this quite yeah, frankly, Father, interesting, yeah. Because I knew that the priest always influences the faithful. And as faithful, we had to behave well. We had to be compenetrated to glorify God. But till now, it never occurred to me that being more serious at Mass, being more compenetrated, I'm actually helping the priest celebrate better. And like, that's and that's what I answer to people because of course you know some people do come up to me and say father you know in my parish you know I don't know but but my priest our parish priest he's he does this he does that you know and it's it's difficult for me to to um to uh, to concentrate myself at mass because well there's there's this music and then there's that way of doing and that you know w- what should I do father first thing I say don't criticize. Don't go and correct the priest. Never. Exactly. Yeah. All right? So we have to always treat him as a father. He's your father. So how are you going to deal with your father who's maybe, you know, forgetting um, some aspect of, of his sacred position? A minister you know? of God, right? Yes. So the first thing I tell them is you have to behave, you know, at mass as though everything was sacred. You know, just be respectful, just be pious, just be prayerful, all right? And by your attitude, by your example, this will help, yeah, exactly. all right? I know it, 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 you know, it's not an immediate intervention. You're yeah. not going to correct, you know, the abuse at the moment. But 
it's not the moment to correct abuse. You know, if it's, 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 these are very delicate moments, especially you're at mass, you're speaking to a parish priest. So, you know, my experience, all right, is that just pray for your parish priests, pray for the church, pray for all the clergy, and you will make a difference by being more virtuous, exactly. by being more pious, by, by, by being holy. All right. At least another person will notice too the way one is assisting mass. Yes, they will, they will sense. They will feel like, oh, there's something more to than what I'm just seeing. What the music that I'm maybe dancing to inclusively, like they they will feel that. It's, yeah, exactly. when they see somebody pious enough, the person realizes what am I doing? It should mm -hmm. not be. In fact, Father. God made us different. Each each person has a different role in society, in church. St. Louis, the king, he had at his time clergy who were not good. Clergy yes. who... But then yes. he never assumed the role of a bishop. He continued as a layman, even though he was king, he was a layman. Yes. And in spite of everything, he would have recourse to other clergy. He would... But he never exceeded his bounds to put things... As a king, he could, he could take drastic right. measures, but then he realized that as a layperson, it would be right for what would give more glory to God mm. was to, was to when he had to oppose, he would oppose. When he had to correct, he would come. But as a layman, never forgetting his place. Yes. And he is a saint. There of course, go. if he had decided to step out of his bounds, start telling the priest in a way that is not uh, correct, start starting to assume, usurp the, the powers of the bishop, then he would not be a saint today. He did more good by, at moments, abstaining from certain actions Hmm. Then, if he had done that, he would have caused evil, in spite of the fact that he was he had a good intention. So these things are delicate. These things are and and let's always remember. Thanks be to Our Lady, we we do have um, many parishes. Um, most people, anyways, have have the option to be able to go to different parishes. So if someone has a problem with um, with the way mass is being celebrated in their own parish, you know, because it's in in it's it's a little bit too agitated. You know, too much uh, uh, of um, too much uh, of uh, let's say distractions at mass. Well, then you know what? You know, don't fight it. You know, just pray and then just go off to another parish. All right, try to find a parish where there's more um, you know there's more harmony with your 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 desire of sacrality and prayer. So it's uh, you know because we have to be always so so charitable and careful you know there the church has so many enemies to begin with from outside the church let's not create more enemies from inside the church yeah. you know let's not, you know the infighting is is what really really destroys and disfigures the church in in the eyes of 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 those who are not catholic exactly you know so so i i always like to think of of noah you know noah when he when he got drunk you know, in the Old Testament, right? Remember, he, he, he had experimented um, uh, wine for the first time. And, yeah. and he didn't, you know, he didn't uh, know better. He, it was good. It tasted well. He just drunk too much, right? Yeah, he didn't know first wine. Time. He didn't know what alcohol was. First time. First time in history that somebody made that. There you go. And so what does Holy Scripture goes and tell us? Well, he got drunk and, and he, he, he took off his, his clothes in, in the middle of his drunkenness. So when his sons came up, all right, his first son, uh, I think it was Japhet. I've, do no, you the remember one, the name? The one who came in first and... Uh, and then the two others. Yeah, exactly. One who, the, the son Sham, who acted Sam? badly. Sh Sham? I, in Portuguese, it's Cam. But, Cam? Uh, but I, you remember how it is in English, brother? Do you remember? Ham. Yeah. In English, okay. And the other sons, who are they? Uh, Jephthah? Shem? Japheth and Shem. Yeah. So Ham. So so Ham came in to the tent of the first, and he saw his father lying on the ground, drunk and, well, basically without any clothes. And what was his reaction? He laughed at his father. Ridiculed him, right? He despised his father. This is something that we should never do. If we see someone in the church, all right, our mother, the church, a priest, a bishop, all right, who is acting badly, all right, never ridiculize. We should never despise, all right? Always remember, they are ministers of God. Exactly. You know, they may be behaving wrongly, all right, but they still are sacred, being ministers. Yeah. All right, this is, this is something that we inherited as heralds of the gospel. You were speaking of Dotto Plinio, um, Dotto Plinio Correa de Oliveira, um, a great Catholic leader here in Brazil that I, I personally got to know um, for, for many years. I met him for the first time in 1982 when I came for the first time. And, and so he always insisted on 
profound respect, even for, you know, um, priests or bishops who were outwardly communists, you know, liberation theology and promoting all kinds of uh, um, these horrible ideologies, etc. He said, we should never, we should, yes, we should um, charitably oppose them, all right, in the sense that we should um, give them the truth, all right, but always in charity. Exactly. Never ridiculize them. Never, 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 never despise them. And so after this, um, after Ham went and, and ridiculized his father, Noah, he stepped out of the tent and then the two other brothers came. Uh, the other two other brothers came and they came walking into the tent backwards with a, um, with a, uh, it was a cloth. They put a cloth over their father in order to help their father, all right, clothe himself in, you know, f uh, f and in a respectful manner. Yeah, and also, so the, I think this is these little sensitiv sensitivities that we have to have in, in front of the, um, in front of the minister of God, in front of mass. I would like to um, uh, just, I have, I have a text here of Saint Padre Pio, all right, Saint Padre Pio, all right, he was, uh, um, every time he celebrated mass, it was um, it was um, well, it was a moment of conversion for many people. And why? Why did Saint Padre Pio celebrate mass in such a way that he would move people's hearts and bring them con to conversion? Because Saint Padre Pio, among other things, all right, he goes and he says, all right, um, I have it quoted here. Saint Padre Pio says, "It would be easier for the world to survive without the sun." than to do so without Holy Mass. That's beautiful. Amazing. Wow. Amazing. So Padre Pio had such a compenetration of the mystery and the grandeur of the celebration of Mass that he had very present that Mass was more important than the sun. <laughs> it would be easier for the sun to extinguish itself than for Mass to um, to, to stop being celebrated on earth because mass is what sustains humanity today. Exactly. You know, and mass is, is of course, as we know it, um, is, it was instituted by our Lord at the Last Supper, but it has its links in the Old Testament. Oh, yes. At, in, in the Passover, mm -hmm. right? In the Exodus, when the, um, Israel went and fled uh, Egypt, all right, and they passed over to um, to um, um, to the desert yeah. and, uh, from from the, the Red Sea, right? Exactly. Right. So so that was their liberation. That was their freedom from slaveryness, from slavery. So mass is also a, a powerful f um, freedom from slavery, from the slavery of vice. We should remember that mass is exorcistic. Exactly. Someone who feels that they are under the um, full influence of the devil um, because the, of the, their past um, sins, you know, they've committed some sins that have, have weakened them. And so the devil has special permissions on them and they feel that, that they're always being kind of influenced or, or invited by the devil to do evil things. Well, go to Mass. Exactly. I tell them, go to Mass and receive Holy Communion because that, that's the most exorcistic sacrament that we have along with the confession of course yes they'll find the, the strength to overcome their vices their shortcomings everything yeah. they find their perfection too not only to uh remedy the faults that we have but also to attain another height of perfection yeah. too well, i think we should do another podcast because it's almost time now on holy communion what do you think a whole podcast Brother Mauro can join us again, speaking about about the specific topic, when, how to receive Holy Communion, how should I receive it the right way, when should I not receive it, and so on. How many times can I receive it? How many times can, exactly. Yes. Okay, very good. That would be a good really good topic. Yeah. Yeah. That would be very, very good topic, because Holy Communion is the apex, of course, of, of Mass. That's where we enter in communion with God, Precise. right? And we are kind of, we, are, we become divine, uh, because... God comes in us, or actually we go into God. Exactly. You know, people think that, you know, when we receive communion, you know, it's God that comes to us. No, no, no. It's us that enter into, into God. Yeah, very well. Very well, Father, Brother John. Just for us to finish, it's almost time. Where the, of course, the podcast we have is a podcast for all Catholics, but especially dedicated to the slaves of Our Lady. Hmm. So ask people who have done a consecration as slaves of love, in the hands of Our Lady to Jesus through Mary. What special advice, what special counsel can you give us as slaves of Our Lady in relation to Mass? Well, um, I think 
you know, my counsel would be the following, is that just like our Lord um, was a slave of Our Lady when he, um, when he, was in, when he incarnated himself in, um, in, 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 in the bosom of Our Lady and he became a slave for nine months in her bosom and, and then he, he was obedient, Holy Scripture says that he was obedient to his mother and to his father, all right? So he, he's our first model of, um, of, of being a slave, of being obedient, of being submitted to his parents. So my suggestion today, brothers and sisters, is that we, through Jesus in the Eucharist, all right, try to live the same submission to the will of God. Because this is where we're going to receive peace. As slaves of love, we are going to receive peace by entering into the will of God. By doing his will, then everything else will find life. We will find life by doing the will of God. So, so this is the mystery of, of our life. This is the mystery of our joy. And, uh, and as slaves, you know, let's ask through the Eucharist to always imitate our Lord in everything and above all in his desire to serve, you know, because a slave is to serve, right? So to serve God by doing his will, but putting this service in action around us with our neighbor, with our friends, with our community, um, with, with our church. Hmm. Beautiful, Father. Thank you very much. So shall we end with a blessing, Father? Very well. So I would like to thank you, Father, Brother John, Brother Mauro. Thank you for having for invited you. me, for having been together. It was a beautiful conversation. So um, let's uh, ask now that uh, Our Lady um, intercede for us uh, with her divine son, Jesus, and may bless us all and make us grow in Eucharistic sensibility, in, in, in the sensibility of Mass, that we may feel that Mass is a moment where our Lord manifests his love and we are able, we are invited to enter into communion with him and therefore also participate in his resurrection. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. And may Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Salve Maria. Salve Maria. Salve Maria.